2023 is over and I played some games. Let's rank them. So I decided I needed to make a rank list of all of the Nintendo Switch games that I've played this year in 2023. Now keep in mind, these are games that I started this year, not including the ones that I started in 2022 and finished in 2023. So how I decided to rank this list is since none of the games that I played, in my opinion, were bad, I'm ranking them as least favorite to most favorite based on gameplay, story, and whether or not I thought it was just good. There is no worst game on my list, so keep that in mind when we're going through our rankings. And without further ado, these are my rankings for the games that I played in 2023. Pigment 2 is an immersive puzzle-solving imagination simulator with musical undertones. I didn't play this one on the channel, but I did do a review of it that you can check out right here. But stick around for this video first. If I had to compare it to something, it's very similar to the movie Inside Out. But rather than having each emotion represented by its own character, there are three main characters that represent certain states of mind within the human subconscious. Courage, optimism, and chaos. And a fourth character, which is the mind itself. It's really a lesson on learning to appreciate what you have rather than what could have been if you had made different choices in life. A beautifully made game with an inspiring message. Not very long, easy to digest. Big Mint 2 Creed Valley comes in on my list at number 7. I played Sonic Frontiers back when it first came out, and it had a lot of good things going for it as far as an original 3D Sonic story driven game. I was hopeful that the Final Horizon DLC that came out this year would give a bit of clarity to some of the unanswered questions from the main game, but honestly, it didn't really. It just felt like an alternate ending, albeit more dragged out. At times, it just got plain frustrating. While I like being able to play as Amy, Tails, and Knuckles, finally, they didn't really add anything to the story other than making Sonic's job easier. Also, the trials are punishingly unforgiving. At the end, I was just ready to be done. While I still liked the story, the combination of burnout from multiple attempts at the final trial and somewhat less responsive controls and dizzying camera angles puts this game in the position of number 6. I played a little bit of this game on stream, probably about half of it at the time of this recording, and it's pretty funny. It's a spin on the classic 1980s comedy horror genre. The game takes place inside a radio station where you, a radio DJ, and your producer are tasked by local law enforcement to take 911 calls as a murderer is running around town. It almost sounds like something out of a cheesy B-movie, but I'm here for it. I didn't get a chance to finish this game, but what I did play, I really enjoyed. It's a mix of puzzle solving and investigation, with some suspense and a lot of environmental interaction. In my opinion, a perfect formula. All things considered, Killer Frequency sits comfortably in the number 5 position. Arguably one of the best cozy games i played this year, Dorf Romantic is a beautiful puzzle builder that uses hex tiles to create gorgeous countryside landscapes. I've played a little over 60 hours of this game, and there's really not that much to it. It's just so relaxing. I like to think of myself as a creative idealist because I have an overactive imagination and I love artistic things that allow me to be creative. So this game was right up my alley. I highly recommend it if you're looking for something with chill vibes. Cozy Vibes put this game squarely at number 4. I'm a huge fan of the Persona series, and the original Persona 5 is one of my favorite games of all time. So, of course, I had to play Royal for the new story content. I'm still working my way through this one on my channel right now, and it's a very enjoyable experience. However, if I had one complaint about the game, it's that the new story content makes the game unnecessarily longer, in my opinion. With the addition of new characters and extra story quests for old characters, it puts a strain on already not having enough time to get through everything and maxing out everyone in one playthrough. But now, even more so since the story progression is on the time limit as well. I haven't gotten to the end yet, and I heard that certain choices can influence the ending now, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. The music is still really great though. This puts this game straight at number 3. I've been a fan of the Jet Set Radio games since I was a kid, and even though this game is technically not related, it wears its influence very heavily on its sleeve. Inspired by the classic game, Bomber Cyberpunk follows the story of a group of street kids looking to be the number one gang in New Amsterdam by tagging their way to the top. 
and also discovering the mystery identity behind the main protagonist. The hit of nostalgia, mixed with an awesome soundtrack, puts this game at number 2. The long-awaited sequel to Breath of the Wild makes its way to the top of my rank list, and is very well deserved. If you're not a Zelda fan, Tears of the Kingdom probably didn't scratch your itch, and that's okay. It's not for everyone, but I loved every minute of it. The introduction of new mechanics and deeper bond with story characters makes this game just different enough from Breath of the Wild so that it's not exactly the same game, but similar enough to believe that the events of both games occurred in the same world, albeit some time apart. Tears of the Kingdom rounds out this year's rank list in the number one spot. So what did you think? Do you agree with my rankings? Would you have done it differently? Or do you have your own game ranking list for this year? Let me know about it in the comments down below. Also, you can follow me on any of my socials. All the links are down in the description of this video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on this video. And I'll see you in 2024. Stay nerdy.